Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah Dodge. I am the Assistant Director for Orientation and New Student Programs at the University of Virginia. And as people are trickling in, I'd like to welcome you back to our Wednesday webinar series. Uh, just as a reminder, our Wednesday webinars are designed to help prepare you for your arrival at UVA in the fall semester. Each week from now until move-in day, tune in to learn more about resources from across grounds. Uh, just a couple of reminders before we get going. There are still deadlines coming up in your new student portal. And so you need to make sure that you're staying up on your tasks and that so that you're ready to roll for the fall semester. You can access your new student portal at uh, orientation.virginia.edu. That's right on our homepage. And again, it's important that you go in there and you're checking off all of your tasks as you complete them. Um, there are deadlines that are coming up between now all the way through August. Uh, just another reminder to check your UVA emails as well. That's where we communicate with you directly. Um, so students, you're receiving those emails, not your parents. So it's important to keep an eye on that inbox for important messages and also to communicate back with your families and supporters about the emails that you're receiving um, so that they know what's going on as you transition to the university, because it's really important to us that you're starting to take ownership over your own college experience. And then finally, just as a reminder, we're happy to hear from you at any time at Orientation and New Student Programs. So feel free to send us an email at orientation at virginia.edu. We're happy to answer your questions or point you in the right direction for anything that you need regarding your transition to the university. Uh, two more things to remember specifically about Wednesday webinars. So we're recording this one tonight from the McIntyre School of Commerce. Um, but recordings will also be posted on our website, which is orientation.virginia.edu, once again, um, under the Wednesday webinar sections uh, within a week of when they are initially recorded. And if you have questions at the end of this webinar that aren't directly answered by our presenters, we really encourage you to reach out to that respective office um, to get those answers to those questions. They are certainly experts in their own areas and resources. So without further ado, I'm happy to introduce our present presenters for the night. Um, we have Sharice joining us from McIntyre School of Commerce uh, and their Office of Admission to talk to you about how to prepare your application to McIntyre and the things you might need to do before becoming a McIntyre student to make yourself an eligible candidate. So Sharice, I'll push it over to you um, and we appreciate you joining us tonight. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And um, hello to everyone. Thank you for being here today. Um, as was stated, my name is Sharice Welch, and I am the Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admissions for the McIntyre School of Commerce, um, and am very happy to be able to share some of our information with you today. So um, as we look at kind of the things that will be covered in today's webinar, um, I would like to uh, show our focus um, will be on the many ways that you can pursue a business education, uh, McIntyre's curriculum and community, uh, as well as a review of the admissions process, the prerequisites, as well as um, advising recommendations, uh, how you can engage with us and, and be connected to our office. As, and then there will be um, a time for uh, questions at the end. When we um, think about all of the, the variety of, of kind of ways in which you can um, be involved with uh, business and commerce at UVA. Um, I think, of course, most commonly, um, you would be thinking of the bachelors um, of, of commerce. That is the more common program. But there are a variety of different ways um, that you can engage with business while you are um, either a part of the McIntyre School or simply just at UVA. And that doesn't matter kind of what your major will eventually be. Um, and so one of the first kind of primary ways is through um, our elective courses. And so we have commerce courses such as personal finance, um, money markets and investing, um, commercial law. Those are ways that students can you know, take those courses and use them as a bit of a complement to whatever else they're studying um, throughout their time at UVA. 
The business community at the University Career Center is also another great way for students to um, begin their um, personal as well as professional um, development. Uh, by engaging with the career counselors that, that are there at the University Career Center. Um, we also have commerce-related student organizations. Uh, there are a number of organizations to, to take part in while you're on grounds, and there are um, several that are specifically related to, um, to business and commerce. We also have the McIntyre Business Institute, and that uh, offers an online certificate in the um, essentials of business. So the, the, you know, the essential skills that go into um, uh, any business and, and as you're looking at the, the, global, um, the global market. And that's an opportunity for students as well. Then we also have um, four minor offerings um, that, that are available to students. And, and of course you can pursue these minors um, in addition to perhaps the bachelor's, but also instead of or in place of. So you could have a major um, outside of McIntyre and then be pursuing uh, one of the minors that we, we have on offer. Uh, so we do offer the leadership minor. We have the entrepreneurship minor. The entrepreneurship minor has three different concentration areas, uh, and they are innovation in business, uh, as well as um, social entrepreneurship, and then technology entrepreneurship. We offer the real estate minor, and the focus of that minor is on commercial real estate. We also have um, our general business minor, and that is new. It's actually um, starting um, this academic school year, um, and that would be just a general um, basic foundational business skills um, minor. In addition, we have the Masters of um, Science and Commerce. Now, that isn't exactly um, the, you know, a degree that's, that's um, managed through the undergraduate admissions office, but our graduate admissions partners um, would be able to work with students on that. And essentially that is an opportunity for students to um, get an undergraduate degree in any other um, discipline or subject area that's not business or commerce, and then they can still pursue that master's degree in commerce. And it's an accelerated, um, 10 month program, so not even a full year. Uh, and many students do um, choose to pursue that um, right after they've earned their uh, undergraduate degree at UVA. And then they have the opportunity to stay on for a little bit more time and then get a master's with that. And then of course we have the bachelor's of science um, and commerce degree uh, that is available as well. So when we talk about the BS in commerce, um, it is really important, oops, pardon, let me go back a moment. When we talk about the bachelors in commerce, it is really important um, to, to stress um, and to um, clarify that it is a two-year program um, that has a liberal arts foundation. And so the program is uh, starting uh, in the third year of a student's undergraduate um, program while they're here at UVA and it continues through the fourth year. Um, the graduates with that degree will have a broad understanding in global business, as well as be, they will be able to develop um, and practice both their hard and soft skills that are applicable in any industry. Uh, something of distinction for the McIntyre um, undergraduate degree is this integrated core experience. It's also known as ICE for short. Um, so students are assigned to um, a block and there are eight blocks total. So then there would be 50 students per block. Um, and it is taught by a faculty team uh, who will teach this integrated curriculum and it will cover the various subjects that you see listed um, in front of you there on the slide from strategic management all the way down to finance. Uh, in addition, each block will have a corporate sponsor. And so every year we have four corporate sponsors um, and the corporate sponsors will um, sponsor two blocks um, per, per business. Uh, and um, what is happening in this uh, integrated core experience, it's that when students are in their blocks, they are learning um, kind of in a cohort style, 
um, where it is um, team-based, it's project-focused, um, and they, it's a very collaborative learning experience. Um, the corporations are presenting students with a, um, a case study or a project, and the project is um, the main focus that students will be working on for the um, first semester uh, of, of the program. And they are responding to whatever it is that the, um, the corporate sponsor has posed to them as the, you know, the, um, the case study or kind of the business question. So the uh, project will involve students to be able to do research um, on the company, research on whatever, you know, sector in the market that they, they need to present on. Um, it also involves a lot of um, soft skills such as communication and presentation, um, as well as uh, learning um, and utilizing um, everything else that they have been, that they are being taught um, by that faculty team amongst those subject areas. So it's very pre-professional um, and it's a wonderful way that's very hands-on learning for our students um, to be able to learn as well as utilize their business skills. So the major is commerce. Um, however, students in addition to that will be concentrating on specific areas of study. Um, and so every student must select at least one area of concentration. And you see the five listed there from accounting, finance, information technology, management, or marketing. Um, and then to kind of um, complement that uh, concentration area, students have the option of selecting a track. And your tracks are um, more multidisciplinary. And so they cover um, several different uh, areas and they are then supporting the area of concentration that the student has selected. Um, as, as I said, they are optional, so students may choose one or possibly up to two um, uh, tracks that, that they would intend to pursue. When we think about um, the community that we have here and the resources that are available, uh, we like to talk about um, the opportunities that we have um, that are pro provided by our student services. Um, so our student services office uh, will um, offer the ability for students to have um, academic advising. So every student who is pursuing a degree um, uh, the bachelor's degree is assigned an advisor, uh, and they will meet with their advisors throughout the year um, for, you know, all the various um, academic needs that they have. Those advisors are also um, able to provide students with a more kind of global student success um, uh, level of advising as well as referrals. Uh, so, you know, that could be academic enrichment or remediation. Um, it certainly is looking at um, the, the emotional um, well-being of students as well. And so um, those our advising team are um, well you know equipped and informed to be able to um, help students all the way through until graduation. The Student Services Office also offers the ability for students to um, study abroad or to just be involved in other opportunities um, on a more global scale. Uh, so for if, it, so if students um, do meet the requirements for being able to study abroad, we do have partner institutions where students will uh, be able to go and spend their time and receive um, credit for um, their UVA courses that they um, uh, are not attending, but they are attending at the, um, the partner schools. So uh, no time is lost there. Uh, and then we also have more short-term faculty-led programs um, that uh, are also available and tend to happen. They um, are usually about two weeks in length, and then they happen uh, when we have uh, January term, also known as J term, um, or uh, other times in the spring and, and sometimes in the summer as well. And so that uh, is another opportunity for our students to um, uh, have a, um, a, an international and kind of global experience. 
Our student services office will also put on community programs. Uh, and so they can be things that um, are just a bunch of fun or certainly um, anything else that kind of supports any other area of our program. So we do have those as well. In addition uh, to being a part of our community here, we do, um, as was mentioned earlier, have these commerce related student organizations and we have more than 20 of them. Um, and uh, I you know, have added to our slide this, uh, this statistic and that we, that 50 percent of McIntyre students participate in a commerce related student organization um, to show that um, it's not all of our students. Um, one could maybe uh, want to make the assumption that, of course, because it's commerce or business related, that then every student is involved in that. And though that's just not the case. Um, many students are, but many students are not as well. Um, stu our students choose to pursue their areas you know, of interest in, in a variety of different things that exist beyond just um, something that's business or commerce related. Uh, another important uh, resource that's a part of our community is our Commerce Career Services. Uh, and so um, our um, CCS provides career pr preparation for our students um, and basically uh, does all of the things that are needed for our students to be able to manage the kind of ever-changing global network um, and, and global marketplace. And so um, they do provide lots of opportunities for students to engage with employers, whether it's um, bringing employers, um, you know, on grounds and having um, those engagement days. They offer career fairs. Um, they will also um, have career series, um, all sorts of things. So we have lots of activity that's going on uh, here in the building and in, in other spaces on grounds. Uh, and then, of course, that all kind of um, culminates into successful, successful student employment rates um, because our students do um, nearly, you know, all will have a job placement at the time of graduation. Um, we're also going to spend a little bit of time now talking about the admissions process, some of the prerequisite courses, as well as advising. Most students will apply um, for the for their application to McIntyre um, in the month of January in the second year um, to be to then begin the program in the the fall of the third year. Okay. Um, we say most students because there are um, every year a handful of students who in their first year, perhaps because of the um, you know, the dual enrollment or, or test credits and things like that, that they come in with, uh, that they are positioned to be able to apply uh, in their first year uh, to apply to McIntyre. For those students who find themselves in that situation, we strongly encourage you to um, come meet with a member of our um, admissions staff right away as soon as you're on ground um, so that we can have the opportunity to um, give your profile a thorough review to make sure that you are actually you know, in a good position to be able to do that. But, but again, for most all other students, they are applying um, in the second year. Our undergraduate admission committee is looking for community builders, um, people who are going to use commerce for the common good. That happens to be our part of our vision and our mission um, is that you know students will be able to um, use business um, to be able to better you know our our world and our society. And so, um, as a part of that, the class that the admissions committee is looking to build is going to bring a diversity of experience, background, and skills. They're going to possess, possess intellectual curiosity, be academically prepared, highly engaged, um, and that can be, you know, certainly here on grounds at UVA in the greater Charlottesville area and community, as well as the global community, and that students will be demonstrating emotional intelligence as well. 
Now, when we turn our attention to prerequisite courses, I know that um, course registration and enrollment will be um, coming up next month um, for, for you. Um, and so one of the things um, that we definitely like to take some time and, and go through and talk about um, are the prerequisite courses, uh, because these are required in order to apply uh, for um, the Commerce School. Um, and as I kind of go through the various um, subjects, I will kind of talk about some of the common questions and, and also suggested um, and just advising suggestions that we have placed around them as well. Before I get into that, though, I would like to say that our office does um, um, fully support and, and um, kind of comply with um, any test credit or dual enrollment credit um, that the College of Arts and Sciences um, will, um, will um, use as their review of, of students' transcripts. So um, if you've received credit from them or through them, um, certainly if you've maybe used the credit analyzer um, uh, or the AP or IB, you know, or tef other test credits um, equivalencies, you know, we um, will utilize those as well and, and, and they, they become a part of your process with us as well. Um, when we're talking about the foundations of commerce, COM 1800 course, and the first writing requirement, which is also known around here as NWR, so that's that E-N-W-R, um, you will notice that um, there is enrollment based on the last name of, uh, of your last name and kind of the, and alphabetically where that falls. And so, um, Basically, when you're registering and enrolling for that class, you have to follow that requirement in addition to being able to enroll in those particular classes. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. But um, overall, the, our recommendation is that you do take them in the first year. So whether that's first semester or second semester, again, will depend upon your last name, um, but that it should be taken in the first year. Now, there are uh, times where in, in situations where that might not necessarily uh, be, be your case, um, and it's okay then to kind of take it a little bit out of sequence, but um, most students are taking it in the first year. Um, now, when we look at calculus, I will, you will notice that calculus um, is highlighted in orange along with a few other courses. Those are all the quantitative courses um, that we've just highlighted to be able to, you know, kind of differentiate um, the two. So you'll see that basically half are um, quantitative and then the other half are more kind of qualitative courses. Um, when it comes to calculus, McIntyre requires that you um, have at least the first year of calculus, and there are three um, different courses that you can take according to your um, level and ability within, um, within math and with calculus. So Math 1190 is a survey of calculus with algebra. That class is intended for students who have not um, previously been exposed or experienced calculus in high school. Um, and so uh, that course could be for you where, you know, it has more of a focus on um, algebra as well as um, extra help, things like that. Again, if, you're, if you've had no previous calculus exposure. The Math 1210 course is a survey of calculus. Um, and it would be the course for students who may have had some calculus. However, they do, they do not have that credit that they're bringing with them to UVA. Um, I want to make a point of kind of clarification that the Math 1190 is not necessarily the easier course. That course um, will take the same assessments as the math 1210 level course will. It's just that it's moving at a different pace. It's, you know, again, there's more help built within that class because students have not previously had that exposure to calculus. Um, and then the, the math 1310 is your more standard calculus course. It also, um, if students have received AP or IB credit 
um, for their math, um, having earned fours or fives and things like that in those um, within those classes, you will have you will earn then the transferable credit uh, here at UVA for the math 1310. So again, that is your standard calculus course. For students who are coming in with that math credit already, again, satisfied through tests or something like that, um, we would then encourage you to, um, if you would like to continue with math, maybe you want to pursue, you know, math major or math minor or something else that might require higher levels of mathematics, you are certainly welcome to continue within the next level of math that's available to you. But otherwise, if you come in with the credit, you're fine. And then we would recommend that you perhaps look at one of the other quantitative courses um, that are prerequisites, namely statistical analysis, that you would go ahead and, and take that course. So statistical analysis, moving on to that, that is STAT 2120. We also recommend students take that in the first year if they can. Um, again, it doesn't matter kind of whether you're doing it first or second semester, but just uh, during the first year. Um, that course is uh, somewhat unique here at UVA in that it incorporates um, some introduction to coding. That's a part of that stats class. So students who may come in again with kind of some kind of test credit um, may not have been exposed to the coding component. And so our suggestion is that um, you then take a, a coding course if you've not either through self-study or some other previous um, study have, have been exposed to coding. And um, you may do either the Python or R, um, it's it's uh, kind of up to you and, and what your schedule might allow you to do, um, but that, that would be our suggestion or recommendation. Artistic, interpretive, and philosophical inquiry is also known as AIP. Um, and the AIP course, uh, there are several different options uh, that can fit within that, that are from kind of all different subjects and disciplines. And um, it's completely up to you, whatever course you like to choose, um, according to your level of interest uh, is, is fine. We just are looking for at least three credits of that. World language is through the 2020 level. Um, and Again, this could be a subject for further discussion with students, depending on if you've studied a language or not. Um, if you have perhaps a, a mother tongue or a native language that you might be able to test out of, all these different things. But what we're looking for is that you have at least to the 2020 level, which would translate to being at least four semesters um, of college level language. And for um, principle of economics, there are um, two different courses within that. There is the microeconomics, which is Econ 2010, macroeconomics, which is Econ 2020, uh, and economics, the language, and the AIP are all suggested years to, to take it either the first or second year, again, again according to how your schedule permits. Uh, and then the final uh, prerequisite would be accounting, introductory accounting, and it is also two courses. The COM 2010 is uh, financial accounting and the COM 2020 is managerial accounting. Something to note about the accounting courses is that they are online asynchronous. And it doesn't matter when you were to take it. So um, if you took it, if you take the class during the academic year, um, so whether that be in the suggested second year, first semester or second semester, the, the course is going to be an online course. If you perhaps also might want to take one of um, one of the courses in the summer, it will be an online course. So that's just something to keep in mind as well when you're planning your schedule is that it's an, it's an asynchronous online um, course. All of these uh, prerequisites are intended to be taken over four semesters. Um, so that's over the two years, first and second year. Um, and all of the prerequisites must be completed, um, certainly uh, before a student would enroll if they are accepted into the program. Um, it's very common for students to have one or two prerequisite courses that they still need to take in their second year 
um, uh, at the same time that they've applied to the um, applied to the school. So the application will take place kind of right before second semester of second year. Um, and then students will be going into second semester still taking one or two prerequisites, and that's completely fine. The committee will see that you have it at least listed on your, um, your schedule of classes and that they will know that it's in progress. Some additional advising recommendations, take full course loads. Um, so for um, the kind of traditional full course load would be 15 credits. We commonly see students, um, especially depending on kind of what you're um, studying here. And if you do something called the engagement pathway, you might end up with maybe 14 credits. Um, sometimes maybe it's a little bit over 16 credits. Uh, that all counts as being a full load for us, um, but we certainly want you to at least have the attempt of, of full, uh, full course loads. We want students to also challenge themselves with rigorous courses and choosing from multiple you know, disciplines or areas. The main thing is that you're sharpening your um, various skills, so oral and written communication, global perspective, creative and critical thinking, ethics and moral reasoning, as well as your quantitative skills. Um, we recommend that students stay on track to complete area requirements, um, especially um, uh, in the College of Arts and Sciences. That's a good way to kind of keep a very broad um, as well as rigorous course load by kind of sticking to what those requirements are. Um, we also ask students to, you know, explore um, the, the many different kind of schools and, and majors as well as elective courses that are available. Um, all the while maintaining a balanced schedule as well. Um, so what um, we recommend is that students avoid taking, you know, more than two quantitative prerequisite courses in the same semester. Um, occasionally there is the student for whom quantitative is really their area of strength. And so they might be able to handle a little bit more, but um, many of the quantitative courses do require a lot of time. Um, and so we want you know students to, again to maintain that balance within their schedule. And then lastly, get involved uh, outside of the classroom in anything, any kind of activity that is of interest to you. We encourage uh, you to you know connect and, and engage with us. Uh, you are welcome to visit our office for in-person advising. Uh, we are in Rouse and Robertson Halls uh, on the lower level in suite number 142. Um, once the fall semester resumes, we will also have ambassador advising, which is peer-to-peer. -peer. We have our student ambassadors who are third and fourth year students um, who uh, work with our office to advise students, um, and they will do that advising in person, uh, or they also uh, offer the opportunity to do it online via Zoom. You may uh, reach out to us by using our email uh, or our phone number, which you see listed on the screen. Um, and then we always encourage you to use our website as well. Um, and in particular, I'll highlight that we do have a Keeping Up With Calm blog that have a lot of good information um, that we share with, you know, with the general public um, that that's very interesting to to kind of see uh, monthly kind of what the updates are uh, as well. We have additional resources for things um, such as all the prerequisites that I've gone over today, um, a sample application, admissions dates, deadlines, and a lot of additional information. So definitely staying up with our with our website is um, a, a great thing to take advantage of as well. And now, um, if we have any questions, now would be the time for us to, to have a look at those. Let me see. Um, I see that there are a few questions in the Q&A. So um, please, if you do have those questions, go ahead and, and um, use the uh, Q&A function that we have as a part of the webinar today. And um, I'll try to go through as many as we have time for. All right, let me see. For course selection and scheduling, should a first year student take COM 2010 if they already obtained college credit 
for COM 1800, or should they wait until second year to enroll in COM 2010? Um, so if so, for this particular student, um, because you've already obtained that college credit, um, that's wonderful and great for COM 1800, I would say you may go ahead um, and continue working through the prerequisites. So just move to the next one. So definitely take um, the COM 2010 uh, if you'd like to um, for first, for first, uh, anytime in the first year. So first semester or second, to, second semester, that's fine. You can do that a little bit ahead of schedule. All right, let's see. Are students that are planning to apply to McIntyre with last names L through Z guaranteed a spot in the foundations of commerce in the fall? If not, what happens if you are unable to get a spot in the class? Unfortunately, it is a bit of kind of supply and demand. Um, and so the McIntyre School is a very popular school um, and we don't have unlimited spots. And so it, unfortunately, you might find yourself um, not being able to secure a spot. Um, and so in that case, there usually is always a wait list that is available. Um, so you can certainly go on the wait list. Uh, and then if you aren't able um, to take it in first year, there could be an opportunity as well to take it in second year. Um, and then that uh, becomes a little bit more pressing, I, I understand, because it's the year of the application, but students will definitely, you know, kind of get into the course, certainly in second year, if, if they weren't able to make it first year. Um, but I, I would say going into this, um, this enrollment uh, time, just be patient. Um, lots of changes happen, you know, daily. Um, and so if it's looking grim uh, for something kind of starting out, it may not end up that way. If you just kind of keep checking, if you're on the wait list, work the wait list, things like that um, can, uh, can certainly happen kind of last minute as well um, there. All right, let me see. Let's see, how many credits, oops, what's happening here to my screen? How many credits um, is a full course load? So um, traditionally a full course load is 15 credits. So basically that's five classes at three credits each, but then, you know, um, courses are assigned different credits depending on the type of class that it is. And so you might have a, for instance, the statistics class, the stats 2120, that's a prerequisite is a four credit class. So it could, you know, uh, bump your total credits either down one to maybe 14 or maybe more, more than 15 up to 16, something like that. Um, and so that's perfectly fine. It's basically within that 14 to 16 range um, is what we're what we're looking for and would consider to be a uh, full course load. Let's see. Um, how likely is it to get in all the prerequisite classes? What if I don't get in? So that's kind of like the other um, question with the Com 1800. Um, similarly, there's you know there's a wait list. Uh, there's the ability, um, you know, to be able to to uh, kind of petition or maybe speak with the professor if if, if it's a pretty dire situation. Um, some of the prerequisites, like economics, for instance, is a very um, large uh, capacity class, and so uh, that class. Um, you know, is, is not going to be necessarily the same as the foundations of commerce. Um, so I do believe that students, um, it's certainly in the in my advising experience, um, just even in the last year um, of first year and second year students, um, all students have been able to get into what they needed, certainly by the time of the, the application deadline. Something else to um, that might be available to you uh, and and, only a few students have have really chosen to do it this way, so that they didn't they didn't have to run up against the the um, possibility of not being able to get a course. Is maybe taking something in the summer as well. But again, we understand that the summer is a very different time frame. Not everybody has that time to do it, but that that could be um, a you know a possibility as well. But from what I've seen this past year, 
all students over the, the, the four semesters, over the two years of, um, of working through the prerequisites have been able to get what they need. Let's see, do you have to apply to the school if you are just wanting to minor in a subject in the business school? Great question. Um, so uh, the three minors, the leadership, the entrepreneurship, and the real estate do have an application process. So it's a separate application um, and you would you know, need to complete that in order to, to apply for those minors. The general business minor, um, as I mentioned, is a new um, offering that um, this particular, this year um, was, has been, um, uh, it's, it's piloted and kind of has gone by invitation. The intention is that it will not require an application and just be a, something that you declare um, after you've kind of taken the courses. So there's a bit of a mixed answer um, for, for that reply that some of the minors are basically the ones that we've had established. Yes, there is an application for them. Um, those details will also be available on our website with deadlines and things like that. Um, but the general business minor, because it's new, um, is not requiring an application at this time. Let's see, there's a question about acceptance rates. I know acceptance rates can change from year to year, but what has been the typical acceptance rate to McIntyre in recent years? Um, yeah, so we do uh, print uh, or publish um, our uh, statistics on our website. So please feel free to, to go and have a look. And we do have up, I believe, the, the previous uh, three years, I believe is there. Um, but I will share that um, we, so there are, there are kind of two parts to the, um, or two, um, populations that apply to McIntyre. So we have our internal students, so students who are here at UVA, um, and then we have our, our external students who are transfer students that are coming from outside of UVA. Um, and so we hold a number of spots for our internal students. Um, and out of that, um, out of the students who have applied, the acceptance rate has been around 60%. For the last few years, um, this past year was a little bit closer to 50% um, of all students who applied uh, were accepted. Uh, so yes, but if you want some additional information, you're again, more than welcome to visit our website to um, see past years and exact figures and things like that. This question is, do I have any specific course recommendations outside of the prerequisites. Um, I would recommend, I mean, the, the conversation is somewhat different kind of depending upon the, the individuals that I'm advising, right? So, I mean, first and foremost, it's really just pursue the courses that um, are of interest to you, you know, kind of besides the, pre, the, the required ones, the prerequisites. Um, there's kind of two ways of looking at it, um, I, I think. Um, for some students who really don't know um, and who really just want to explore, I would say follow the um, the area requirements or kind of the the other common way to describe them is the general ed requirements, especially if you're in the College of Arts and Sciences, is just to follow that because then you are, you know, kind of ticking boxes for the college um, with your intention of applying to McIntyre. So you're still like progressing through that program and you're getting exposed to a variety of different subject areas. The other way of looking at it as well um, is if, you know, we encourage when we're advising students um, is to have a you know, an alternative major, a kind of backup plan, so to speak, um, because again, not everyone who applies um, will actually be admitted into, into McIntyre. So we want you to have a, a plan B. Um, so whatever that other major is that you can, you know, pursue courses within that. Uh, and that might be a great way um, to be able to, you know, diversify your courses and what you're taking and, and then give you some good exposure to some things. So that is what I would say. If you are a student um, who has um, kind of progressed through a lot of the prerequisites already, um, then uh, some of those elective courses that I spoke about at the beginning, um, those commerce elective courses like personal finance, markets and investing, commercial law, just to name a few, those could be, you know, 
other options that, um, that are at least within the comm school that might be of interest. Let's see. Um, how about this question? Can you double major with one major in McIntyre and one outside of it? Um, yes, yes, you can. So um, many of our students who are pursuing the bachelors of commerce um, are also pursuing a, um, a major outside of McIntyre as well. It's, it's a very high percentage of students who do. Um, and some of that, you know, happens because of the prerequisites, the fact that they are courses in other disciplines, other subject areas, um, so that it allows you to be able to already have some of those courses completed. Um, so it's a very common thing uh, for, for students to do. The, the main important thing, I think, when if, if you're going to set out to do that is just know that you, you know, you've got to um, manage your, your schedule and really plan things out so that you can meet the requirements for both. But um, the McIntyre degree does allow for students to, um, to be able to, to pursue another major outside of McIntyre. That also is somewhat dependent to, um, in terms of, you know, if, if you have more than one concentration, if you're pursuing a track, um, things like that, that also would kind of factor into that conversation. But again, on the whole, yes, students do. Let's see. Um, if I graduate with a BS in commerce, I assume I have to reapply for the accelerated MS program, correct? Oh, I'm so glad this question has come up because I'm going to clarify something. Um, if you graduate with the BS in commerce, then there's no reason for you to take or to apply for the, the MS in commerce, the master's in commerce. That, um, that uh, program is specifically designed for students who do not have a bachelor's degree in commerce or business. So um, yeah, we would, we would not encourage you to do that. That, um, that, is, that is not, um, that's you know, not gonna be a good use of your time. Now there are other master's um, programs that that are housed here in the Commerce School, such, such as the Masters of Information Technology, Masters in Business Analytics, things like that. Those are certainly, you know, open to you, any other master's degree, but not the Masters in Commerce. So I'm glad that you asked that question. And for students, a, a student who would pot potentially be looking at the Masters in Commerce is someone who was not accepted into the bachelor's um, degree. So then that student would be, you know, studying something else in the college. Um, oftentimes it's maybe economics or something like that. And then that student would be looking to apply for the master's in commerce um, degree and program after they've, they've completed um, that other, you know, that other area of, of their undergraduate degree. Okay, let's see, what other questions do we have here? Um, what are some examples of activities McIntyre students have been involved in outside of the classroom? Um, Oh goodness! I mean, there's there's a variety um, of of things that our students are doing. Um, so many through the um, the uh, the CIOs or the student organizations. There are um, different opportunities that come with that. So um, you know, students may be in different case competitions. Um, for for example, that that they're participating in um, certainly through um, with different um, uh, corporate corporate uh, partners and um, businesses that come on grounds. They have lots of different opportunities for students to 
to, to get involved um, with the things that they have going on. We have different conferences. Um, McIntyre itself puts on, um, for instance, a real estate conference every year. So students who, whether you're a part of the real estate, you know, either minor or track or just have a general interest in it, that's something that you could participate in. Um, our student council, our COM council, um, which is our student governing body, um, they put on lots of different uh, things for students to do, um, service-based activities, um, as well as just, you know, overall kind of um, school spirit and um, and class year, class year competitions and stuff like that. So it really run, runs the full kind of gamut of, of things that, that students are doing. Um, in addition to kind of whatever opportunities come up through professors. And so if, you know, if, if they share with students, um, things that they can do, um, you know, students are able to participate in those as well. Let's see, what else do we have? Is a general understanding or background in coding necessary or recommended for the statistical analysis prerequisite class? If you are going to be taking that stats class um, and you've not had any background in coding, that is fine. You will be taught that through the course. Um, so you don't have to have any previous exposure to it. You'll get what you need from that course. Um, what I had spoken about is for students for whom perhaps they took AP statistics um, in high school and they've earned the uh, credit um, for that, um, you know, they've earned a score that that um, allows them not to have to take the STATS 2120 course, then we recommend if, if students have not done any coding that they go ahead and um, add that to their schedule. It's not it's not a, a required um, thing. It's just simply a suggested or encouraged um, uh, additional, you know, kind of course for a student to take so that they can have that exposure and not feel behind or anything like that. So that's that's the answer to that. Um, there is a question um, someone had has asked. Um, just about like they've re researched the sample application. They've noticed that, you know, there's there's something on the sec, there's a particular section that's a part of the application and they want to ask the question. So I have not gone through the application as a part of the conversation um, today. What I would certainly welcome um, is, that, is that if you do have any questions about the application, you're welcome to um, to pose them to, to us and you can reach out to our office via um, email or, or by, by phone, um, but we will have several opportunities um, in the fall to, um, to discuss the application process. We, we have several different information sessions that are um, student um, driven as well as by our undergraduate admissions um, staff uh, so that we can go through all the different parts of the application um, so that students are very well prepared for the deadline that happens in January. The application itself doesn't actually even become available until October. Um, so there's plenty of time um, to make sure that all of your questions get answered and that it's fully explained and understood uh, before the deadline. Okay, so let's see. There's a question. If you have filled a credit for Math 1310 through AP Calculus in high school, does it look better on an application to enroll in a higher um, calculus course? Um, so, you know, uh, the short answer is no. Um, it the the committee is not looking at the at kind of what math number is after. Um, the, the math course, the math prerequisite that you're taking. They just want to see that you are at least taking the levels that have been, um, has, have, are taking at least one of the levels that has been um, offered to you as an option. But um, they understand that calculus is a very challenging subject and that the higher level also kind of denotes, um, you know, a student's um, uh, either ability in or attempt at the ability for that level. Uh, so it's 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 not um, something that will enhance your application um, by by any 
by any um, regard. And, and truly, in terms of if you're coming in already with that AP credit, it's up to you and kind of your pathway, whether or not you want to continue taking math or again, focus on one of the other um, quantitative prerequisites uh, that has been um, listed, you know, just in terms of your time and, and, and how you want to, you know, whatever goal you have for yourself. Let's see, uh, there's a question. How does being an Eccles scholar influence McIntyre application decisions? Is there an advantage or attraction towards students with that distinction? Um, we certainly um, uh, will allow you and encourage you to put your, your Eccles scholar um, down on the application. There will be a space for that. Um, but it is, you know, certainly treated like any other kind of award distinction or honor. Um, something that I will stress with Eccles scholars is that um, Eccles scholars don't tend to have to do the world language um, um, kind of requirement. Um, so if you are applying to McIntyre, we do not exempt you from world language. So you would want to be um, be be sure and be aware that you are meeting all of the prerequisites that are required um, because they, they are still requirements for McIntyre, even if you don't have to, um, to do them as an Eccles scholar. How many concentration areas can I have and how about minors? Um, so in terms of concentrations, you must select at least one. Um, you can have up to two concentrations. Um, there are some concentration pairings that seem to just go well together, and that's something that will be further discussed when you are in the program, and then you have your advisor, and you talk about what your personal and professional goals are. Um, and then in terms of minors, um, you can have one minor um, in the Commerce School and one outside of the Commerce School, if you choose. So, uh, but then you can also not select any minors if you don't want to. A minor is not a requirement. Let's see, I think we have time for a few more questions, um, a couple more at least. Uh, let's see. Um, is it recommended for students who have test credit for the required econ courses to use that credit to satisfy prereqs or still take the courses at UVA? If you have received credit for something, we don't recommend that you retake the course. The most important thing though, is to make sure that um, you are um, sure that you've received the, the exact um, uh, course credit. So it's not that it's just a general credit, but that it actually is Econ 2010, Econ 2020. But yes, if you've already received credit for it, then that's fine. You may continue working through the other prerequisites or taking you know, other courses and appropriately challenging yourself um, according to your situation. For the um, AIP, the Artistic, Interpretive, and Philosophical, must we take the courses on the list to earn the three credits, or can we take related courses and still earn those credits, um, such as university singers? Uh, so it, it you do need to meet whatever the, the um, listed courses are for the AIP. So it does need to be specifically AIP credit in order for um, us to be able to count it. Let's see, can students take courses in the comm school before being admitted to McIntyre? Um, so Yes, if I if I understand this question correctly. Um, so there are, for, for instance, there are three COM courses that are part of the prerequisites. So that would be the COM um, 1800 that's housed in the McIntyre School of Commerce, um, as well as the uh, accounting courses. Um, so those are, are definitely part of the requirements before you are, you know, um, admitted to McIntyre. Um, the commerce elective courses that I've referred to, like the personal finance, um, the money markets and investing, uh, those courses are also um, open to any student um, that that not that's not necessarily in McIntyre. But a majority of the commerce school courses 
are for students who are within the major or the minor. Um, so that's something that when you are able to get into the student information system and begin your enrollment, it's it's all will be detailed. Who can apply? What it and it'll break down. You know what year you are if you are either um, a part of McIntyre School or not. All of that will be there for you um, to help guide you. Let's see. Are there McIntyre events or club organizations that are open to students outside of McIntyre? Um, yes, there are many. And then there are some that are simply for students who are a part of McIntyre or that particular organization. Um, but in general, um, certainly any any uh, event that's kind of put on by, for, for instance, our um, uh, Commerce Career Services um, Office, they tend to be generally open to anyone across grounds. Um, and so, you you know, as long as you know about it, if it's published on our, our kind of um, calendar on our website, um, you are welcome to attend. If there is any particular or specific group that, that they um, are marketing to, then it will be listed there. And then, you know, you know that it's just a, it's a closed event, but um, typically most of the events in the building are, um, are open. And then clubs and organizations are open to anyone. Um, again, for the most part is, I'm trying to think if there are any exceptions, but for the most part, yes, it's kind of open to anyone um, so that you um, should certainly seek them out if you are interested. Let's see, if a student is admitted into McIntyre in their first year, does it mean they need to graduate UVA one year early? Um, there is uh, some, yes, additional discussion that would be um, required of, of students. So we definitely encourage, um, you know, students who are, for whom uh, you might be thinking that you're gonna apply in the first year. Uh, yes, we have, we have, um, we have uh, to discuss that and then a, a few other things as well. There's a question about if ASL can count, um, can satisfy the world language prerequisite requirement. Um, I would defer you to um, the world language um, department. Um, so, uh, and, and to know if that would satisfy, if, if, it, if, you, if it meets the requirements that are, um, that are um, kind of, um, uh, shared by our the, the the world language department in the College of Arts and Sciences, then you um, then it would certainly meet our needs as well. But that's something for you to double check with that because I'm not um, 100 percent sure on that answer. Um, I would, I, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to go ahead and say yes or no. Um, do students need recommendations when applying to McIntyre? No. Um, can I take accounting as a first year? You certainly are um, welcome to. Uh, again, our, our recommendation is that students take it in second year, but again, maybe your situation is different depending upon how you have progressed through the other prerequisites. Um, so, uh, but yes, any, any of those courses that are listed can be done kind of out of the suggested year it is just a suggestion, but most students will, will, will follow the suggestion. Um, okay, I think that about wraps up kind of our time and where we are um, with our questions. Thank you so much. These are all wonderful questions, um, really great. Uh, and certainly if there is something that we were not able to get to or you would um, like some additional um, you know, uh, response or clarification, please don't hesitate to reach out. Again, you can reach me and my colleagues by um, emailing us or giving a, um, at the, um, the commerce admissions um, email address or certainly by giving a call to our office and be happy to assist you.
Thank you, Sharice. And um, we will be back next week for another Wednesday webinar. Um, in the meantime, make sure you're checking that new student portal and keeping up with your tasks so that you're ready to roll for the fall semester. Thanks, everybody, and have a good rest of your night.